everybody, welcome inside the inaugural edition of the Air Max podcast. I am Justin Ayers, joined as always, Nick Lomax. How's it going, everybody? Yes, so this is the very first episode of what we want to do here. Uh, we're going to do a lot of sports, we're going to do hot topics of the day, we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff, uh, create a whole bunch of great content for you guys. So I want to kind of introduce myself, so I of course am Justin Ayers, I'm coming at you live, not really live. Uh, from Studio J. I am in Maryland right now. Uh, inside Studio J, I want to give you a quick tour. As you can see, all around, Baltimore Orioles. Shout out Intentional Talk on MLB Network, the best baseball talk show out there for sending me that. And, and Nick, I know uh, Studio N is up and coming. You know, all I have behind me, I don't have bobbleheads like Mr. Professional, but... Yes, so as you can see, I am repping, I don't know if you can see this or not, Oklahoma, they're playing at Texas right now. Twenty up twenty three ten, Baker Mayfield for Heisman, uh, and I know on your end you got the the Derek Jeter, Yankees yep. going right now. Cracking the eight. They're playing Houston at the moment. It's currently top of the six, one to one. Uh, playing Houston, so I don't know. I'm hoping that they'll be able to pull that out. Of so I don't know if you're ready, but I'm ready. Let's dive in. Do a little prediction, a little picking. Let's go. First matchup we're going to take a look at. The Dolphins are on the road at Atlanta. Now, Miami on offense. They are dead last in passing yards per game. They're dead last in just almost every single major offensive category. I don't think it's, I'm definitely going to take Atlanta. Uh, I think Jay Cutler should have stayed retired. I was really hoping for the best with best for him coming out of uh, retirement, getting away from Chicago, maybe going to the Dolphins and maybe doing a little better. But clearly it's really not. I do like Matt Ryan. Is Julio back for this game? Yeah, he, Julio will be back. So, I think Atlanta will pretty handily win this game without a problem. Well, going off what you said about Jay Cutler, I think 100% the guy should have stayed retired. I mean, right now, he could be on a beach somewhere with just a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. You know what I mean? Like one of those money tables made out of stacks of hundreds, like 50 Cent had. Like, he, he, he could have it all right now, but instead... He just is is sucking it up right now, um, and I am de I'm done with you picking Atlanta this game. Uh, next matchup, we got the Bears on the road in Baltimore. Now, Nick, uh, while last week he might not have lit up the st the stats column, but I think if you're a, I feel like if you're a fan of the Bears right now, you have to like what you're seeing from Mitch. I'm sorry, Mitchell. Don't call me Mitch Trubisky. I'm personally a huge Mitchell Trubisky fan. I, I loved what I saw. Week. Um, I think the fact that he's a little bit more mobile will definitely help them since their line isn't the best. Um, he'll be able to extend plays a little bit. Um, I still think I'm going to go with the Ravens. Their defense is very good. He's a young quarterback. So I think that's what's going to kind of give him the edge and take the Ravens. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't light up the world with his numbers, but obviously he can extend plays with his legs. Uh, he can make the tough throws with his unusually tan arms. I don't know if you noticed this or not uh, in the in the game last time. Is that his arms don't match the skin complexion of the rest of his body? It it is almost as if it is almost as if he got a spray tan but ran out of money three fourths of the way up and just couldn't afford to do anything, so they kind of stopped. That's what the rookie pay will do for you. Yeah, yeah. That's once he gets that big fat contract that Jay Cut. Once he gets that Jay Cutler money, he'll be able to even out and get that, that face on the same level as those arms. Um, but yes, I am also going Ravens this game. Uh, Ravens defense has been solid all year. Um, I like the way they're running the ball. Flacco, eh. But yeah, they're still going to be able to pull this one out and uh, and definitely beat the Bears. Yeah, Flacco doing too hot. We're touchdown receptions so far. That's pretty rough. Well, when you're an elite quarterback, you kind of get away with that. I don't know. I didn't know we were talking about an elite quarterback. Oh, oh, definitely, hundred percent, elite. He, he's getting, well, he's getting paid like elite, so that's that's close enough. Um, next matchup, we got we got Cleveland on the road. They're in Houston. Nick, I would, if there's anybody out there who's taking the Browns, I would love to meet you. I just want to talk to you and see what happened in your life. Get maybe find out a little more about you personally on a deeper level. Uh, this isn't gonna be a game. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Houston. I'd love to see Cleveland get their first. That way, they don't go 0 and 16, but. We'll see. Uh, ESPN's power football index is given Texas, or the Texans an 87.6% chance to win. Personally, I think that's a little low. But uh, Deshaun Kaiser, 
Yeah. He's three down to nine interceptions. That's pretty rough compared to Deshaun Watson, who is doing pretty well. Uh, 12 touchdowns, four interceptions. Can't complain about that. I'm a rookie quarterback. No, uh, I was really excited. I was hoping to see the battle of the Deshauns this game. Um, but Kaiser's been benched in favor of Kevin Hogan, who I think out of Stanford. If he didn't have this job, he would probably be selling insurance somewhere. Yeah, I'm going with Deshaun Elementary, my dear Watson. Yes. Uh, football nicknames, yay or nay at this point? I like, I love nicknames, so. Houston takes this game easily. That's not even going to be remotely close. Moving right along, Green Bay will be on the road at Minnesota this week. Nick, Aaron Rodgers is a wizard. He is a savant with the pigskin. Is there anything he can't do? Play defense, and that's what they would need to do to be an elite football team this year. The other record's 4-1, and one, but they do need a little more help. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers has been crazy good and been pulling things at his behind, but I don't know. I, I think they'll still get the win this week just because is Stefan Diggs playing? No. They're, the inactives of this game, there's no Sam Bradford. Obviously, Dalvin Cook's out for the year, and Stefan Diggs out. So... That's kind of their offense, which will definitely help Green Bay's defense. So I'm, I'm going to go with Green Bay. Uh, ESPN has a rank as kind of a 50-50 split with 0.1% uh, going to Green Bay. Well, so. Yeah, I mean, what does ESPN know? Um, but no, I mean, the Packers, it, for Aaron Rodgers, it doesn't matter who's hurt on offense. It doesn't matter if he has a running game going or not. Uh, it doesn't matter if Mason Crosby is too concerned with trying to get his hair to look exactly like George Clooney to make those extra point attempts. It doesn't matter. a Raj will come through in the clutch, and that's what I'm predicting Green Bay takes down Minnesota. Moving right along, we have the Detroit Lions will be on the road this week. They'll be in New Orleans. <sighs> Nick, the Detroit Lions, they might be the most boring team in the NFL. This is actually a game for me to pick just because Drew Brees is playing amazing this year. And the Saints defense isn't as bad as it has been. But I feel like Detroit this year. Uh, I don't know. I really, I'm going to go with the Saints. Mm. Okay. I think the Saints are going to pull it out. But let me drop a little nugget of knowledge on you. All right, you ready? Nick Lomax, did you know that the Detroit Lions on the road are number one in the NFL in time of possession? I think it's like 34 and a half minutes. Are you a big time of possession guy? Yeah, you can take it or leave it. I mean, it definitely helped the Cowboys last year with Ezekiel Elliott, and uh, so I, mean, I guess it could be a good thing. But with Drew Brees, I just I have faith in him this week. I think that he's just going to light him up. It's going to be a good game. For him. I'm going to pick the Lions, and here's why: the Detroit Lions this year are the equivalent of a bland spaghetti dinner. Hear, hear me out. They there's just no flavor. Uh, you know what you're getting. It's going to be a sad meal, but you know what? The bland spaghetti dinner, di bland spaghetti dinner gets it done. And they will go and they will play the spicy Cajun cooking of Drew Brees, the New Orleans Saints, and they will come out victorious. I feel like the Saints are going to pull this one out. I, I am actually a fan of the bland spaghetti dinner. I just want that to be a fact. I, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, so next up, we have a battle of three and two teams. The New England Patriots take a trip down, MetLife going to play the Jets. Nick. And first place in the East? First place New York Jets, I should say. God. It's not crazy. The one team that was projected to go 0-16 is 3-2 and and on par with the Patriots. Is that not crazy? Um, definitely going to go with the Patriots, obviously. I still kind of dumbfounded of how, they're, how the Jets are 3-2, and but... Good on him. Uh, has there ever been a bigger mismatch of teams that are 3-2 and two at this point in the year? Like, I don't even feel like they should be on the same level, the Patriots and the Jets. They do have Tom Brady, who's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. We'll give him that. Which kind of even things out on the on both sides of the ball, but I don't, I don't see how the Jets could figure out a way to pull this out. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. There's no way uh, the Jets are winning this game. But, here, but, but let me ask you this. So... The way the Jets roster was constructed at the beginning of the year, you when you looked at it, this roster was made to tank. They should be the Cleveland Browns right now. They should be like their neighbors, the Giants. They shouldn't have a win. I mean, look, you have Josh McCown as your quarterback. This dude hasn't won back-to-back -back games in like 10 years or something. It, I mean, it just 
and New York, the Jets, look so bad that they can't even tank right. It's, no, yeah, you're exactly right. They can't even tank right. Pretty bad. I mean, like, you're... They traded away Sheldon Richardson. They have Josh McCown. They have Matt Forte was their starting back at the beginning of the year, I think. There's no way they should have a winning record. Especially the massive quarterbacks is coming out. I feel like I would try harder to tank. Especially, yes. yeah. They could if they were t if they were tanking correctly, they could be looking down the barrel of Sam Darnold right now, come draft day. Or your favorite Baker Mayfield. Yeah, don't you don't you put that evil on him. Don't don't. If I if I see on the internet uh, a Baker Mayfield Jets jersey, all hope is lost. There's no like I've seen a Sam Darnold, and they're like, yeah, look, we gotta no, don't I mean don't put that evil on Sam either. Sam doesn't deserve that. I mean, but like right now, come draft day, if the Jets continue on this path, what are they gonna be six and ten, seven and nine at the best? They're gonna be staring at a mid first round pick. They're probably gonna spend it on something inconsequential like a defensive lineman, and they're just gonna continue this brutal cycle. Of mediocrity for years without a quarterback and there's gonna it's gonna be a, a mess all right next up we have the 49ers they are in DC this week to take on the Washington Redskins Nick. Redskins okay well hang on has there ever been a team that has like just so many things gone wrong and have been such a mess like the San Francisco 49ers are right now uh, yeah the Browns the past like 20 seasons yes they are they have reached the, the pinnacle of awful they have now become the Cleveland Browns. 0 and 5 right now. Yeah, I don't I see them uh, beating the Redskins. Redskins are decent. They're 2 and 2, but I feel like they're better than a 500 team. Uh, and it's the 49ers. I don't, I don't they, see them doing anything. They have no wins. They have a paltry defense. What are your thoughts on what they're doing with Kirk Cousins? Do you think they should try and retain him or. No. Do you think the situation right? I am absolutely convinced that they will continue for the rest of his playing career to give him a uh, franchise tag. They're going to be paying him probably 30-something million next year. And Kirk can say all he wants, oh, I want to get a long-term contract. I want to get you – know, well, Kirk, I think I think the franchise tag is suiting you well, okay? Like, I know it's not great getting a one-year deal every single year of your life, but there's no chance they're giving you a long-term deal. I don't know why, but – Hey, every year that tag's going up, man, so just hang in there. Pretty soon you'll be making like 50 mil a year. So, yes, I am also, uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Redskins. All right, so next up we have a matchup of two teams, which really nobody gives a crap about. We have Tampa Bay on the road at Arizona. I'm going to pick Tampa Bay, and I want them to win. Um, I think that the Cardinals that everyone thought was going to be so good a year or two ago, I think they're going to be kind of, on the decline. I don't think Adrian Peterson will really help at all. No. I think he's kind of done. Well, oh, here's the thing. Their offensive line, by all measures, is the worst in football. They're ranked like th they're 32nd in offensive line. And Adrian Peterson is very old. If this, Look, if this was 2010 and I heard that they were getting Adrian Peterson, that would be a huge get. But he is well past his prime. He's not an every down back anymore. And yeah, he's just he give him the ball and go. And he runs. He doesn't, he doesn't catch it. He doesn't block. The Cardinals also feature two of the oldest position players at Carson Palmer at quarterback and Larry Fitzgerald. Both are, should be in the senior citizen home. Larry Fitzgerald is so good. Uh, Carson Palmer, I think he's kind of he's kind of going downhill, and I think he'll be replaced within the next two years. I think it'll be time for them to go out and get a quarterback or go with a young quarterback. Yeah, so definitely, I'm good. Actually, I'm going to pick the Tampa Bay Bucks in this game. Uh, they are younger. They are faster. They have uh, they have teeth in that defensive line up front. Shout out Oklahoma product Gerald McCoy. Next up, we have the L.A. Rams taking a trip down to Jacksonville, playing the Jaguars. If I would have told you last year that these two teams would both be in first place at this point in the season, you probably would have looked at me like I was a fool. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I could definitely Jacksonville just because of the, uh, the division that they're in. Um, the Rams, no, definitely didn't think that they would be in first, but I'm going to pick Jacksonville to win the game. I, I think that the Rams travel that far. Jacksonville's defense is pretty good. Uh, Derek Gold, young quarterback, he has been playing good, but Jacksonville's defense has been killer so far. And I think that they're they're going to pull out. I, I mean, I have got to disagree with you there, my friend. Uh, I have no confidence whatsoever in Blake Bortles. None. 
in his 30 to 9 victory versus the Steelers last week. You, me, and Blake Bortles had the same number of passing touchdowns. All three of us. We had zero. He had 95 yards passing. LA and their defensive line up front, Aaron Donald and the gang, they are they have teeth up front. They're gonna be able to contain Leonard Fournette. Jacksonville is not gonna be able to pass or run the ball with efficiency. But I think Todd Gurley and Jared Goff are playing out of their minds right now. The last couple games have been lighting the world on fire. I am picking the LA Rams go on the road and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. I, I could they see it. Um I mean, the Jaguars' offense is kind of one-dimensional with Leonard Fournette being their their go-to. Uh, if the Rams can shut Leonard Fournette down and put everything on Blake Bortles' shoulders, it will be a long game for the Jaguars. And they will have to rely on their defense possibly for them. To play. I still think that the Jacksonville Jaguars' defense will be enough to pull through, uh, but it, it would not shock me if the Rams did pull it out. If they can stop Leonard Fournette, make uh, Blake Bortles pass the ball, it could be, it could be the, uh, the Rams game. Pittsburgh is on the road this week. They're at Kansas City. Nick, I think we are watching the slow demise of the Pittsburgh Steelers, a sentence that has never brought me more joy ever to say. Really? I do think they're going to win it, and I do think that the Steelers are, are declining. Um, but I don't think they're going to roll over. I, I think it is going to be a tough game, and I could see the upset happening. Um, they still do have a really good offense, the defense is a I could see it happening, but I'm definitely going to go with the Chiefs. They're, I think they're all around better. Now, Ben Roethlisberger. Yikes. Last week against the Jaguars, no touchdowns, five interceptions after the game, told reporters, you know, maybe I just don't have it anymore. And he was he was being sarcastic. I think he was telling the truth. I mean, before the year, you heard him with the retirement rumors, and now I think at the end of the year, that's going to be the biggest storyline in Pittsburgh. Will Big Ben hang him up? Uh, yeah. And I can see that retirement being in his head. Uh, I've heard reports of him and uh, Antonio Brown kind of having disputes in the locker room. Um, one, one passing touchdown for Antonio Brown. Yeah. Um... Once, it, once that bug kind of gets into your head, if you let it get to you, it's going to get to you. And I think he might be done. We'll see. I wouldn't, I'd still like to see him play a few more years. But, yeah, it, it's... Did you know he's been in the league for 14 years? He's been like Big Ben 14 years in the league? It, it does seem like he's been in the league forever. Because when I first started uh, getting into football, he was the one quarterback I could actually remember. Yeah. So... Look at how long Tom Brady, or how old Tom Brady is, look at the level he's playing at. It can be done. Big Ben's definitely had more injuries, and I don't think he will last as long as Tom Brady, nor do I think he will ever get back up to his peak performance. But he could still definitely, if the Steelers could get their defense back to what it used to be, he could still be a Super Bowl caliber quarterback just by not turning the ball over. I think he could manage for another two or three years, but I think that's all he's got. I think that I'm picking Kansas City in this game. Uh, mostly because uh, they uh, they have the NFL MVP Alex Smith and the Offensive Rookie of the Year Kareem Hunt, those two. Oh, definitely great year by them. I'm I'm gonna go to the Chiefs as well. Yep, give me the Chiefs. Stay undefeated. Next up, we have the LA Chargers taking a trip up the coast to visit the Oakland Raiders. Nick, a little news to pass along: Derek Carr is expected to return and play uh, in this game. That makes it a tough one. Um, I definitely would go with the Chargers if Derek Carr wasn't going to play. Yeah. With him playing, I don't know. I don't know how good he's going to be coming off the injury. I don't know how he's going to feel. Uh, I do feel like the Chargers are the best, like one in fourteen, but I don't think they're going to they're going to be able to beat the Raiders. I think the Raiders will edge them out. I think it's going to be kind of a boring game, but we'll see. You'll see if the Raiders can return to what they were last year. Maybe make a run into the playoffs, but. Yeah, I'm not far. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm also taking the Raiders. But if you remember two weeks ago in the game against the Broncos, Derek Carr took that vicious hit, had a back injury, a la Tony Romo. They initially said two to six weeks he would be out. Now, last week, E.J. Manuel was the quarterback. Uh, lost really bad to the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I don't know if Derek Carr is 100% healed or not. Uh, I don't know what motivated him to come back. I personally think... He was laid up and he was watching E.J. Manuel and thinking, oh, God, 
we this is this can't happen. I got to get out there. So I think he willed himself back. Yeah, definitely. I think that he wanted to be out for six weeks and watch his team lose pretty much every single one of those games because um, that definitely would eliminate them from the playoffs. I think with him coming back this week, it's a little bit dangerous. I would definitely give him this week off playing the Chargers. They still might be able to pull a win out with EJ Manuel, although I don't likely. But if he if he feels like he's good enough and not declared him, good for him. One thing I'm learning is that injury timelines are almost all like almost always BS. Two to six weeks they gave him. If you don't believe me, ask Andrew Luck about that injury timeline. See how well that turned out. One last thing about this matchup. Uh, one thing I'm going to be paying attention to is Amari Cooper, who at this point I am completely convinced is simply Darius Hayward Bay in disguise. This dude cannot catch anything. I was a big fan. I, uh, I had high hopes for him. I did like, uh, last year I did love watching the Raiders. Um, Everybody did. Yeah, I, I love. I like seeing different teams win. I just don't want to see New England win it every single year, <laughs> even though I'm a big Tom Brady fan. Yeah. But we'll see. Uh, hopefully he, he turns out to be the star receiver that everyone thought and that he can help Derek Carr. Dude has bricks for hands. He drops clear passes. Nobody's even around him, just bricks for hands. Give me the, Ra <laughs> Give me the Raiders. So next up, we have the New York football giants on the road against the Denver Broncos. Nick. I also have some news of my own to pass along. I don't know if you know this or not, but I recently just returned from my trip to New York. I had a little team workout with the Giants uh, to play a little wide receiver. Yeah, just when you look at me, just think Wes Welker without the speed or the concussions. It's going to be rough without Odell Beckham Jr. I kind of want to pick the Giants to get their first win. What? Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> it's insane. I, had, I just... I feel like this is going to be the one upset of the week. I feel like it's going to be a pretty oh. big upset. I don't I don't think the Giants are 0 and 5 bad. I think they should definitely have two wins at least, but Denver's defense is very good. Um, their offense has been average. Let me the Giants are terrible, so Yow, you're just you're blowing my mind right now, my man. I'm going to drop a little drop some more not some more nuggets of knowledge on you. All right, you ready for this? So this week, the Giants are without, obviously, Odell Beckham and Brandon Marshall, who are both out for the season. Oklahoma product, Sterling Shepard is out with an ankle injury. So, and if you thought Eli Manning looked horribly confused out there before, imagine him this week. He's not going to know what's going on. It's not like Marshall was really there before anyway. They never really threw to him. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr., as, as good as he is, I mean, obviously him being on the field hasn't translated, translated to wins, so maybe this will be good for him. It'll open their eyes and they'll try some new stuff, and maybe it'll work. Um, they spent a lot of money on their defense, so you would think no, that they'd be good enough to like handle Trevor Simeon. Coming into the season, if you had told me the Giants would be 0-6, I would have thought you are crazy. Uh, this season definitely has not played out like many people thought. I am, I'm going to take the Giants in a crazy upset just because I don't want to pick with – like the rankings every time, and uh, we'll see what happens. The Broncos, by the way, are 11 and a half point favorites in this game, which sound, which that seems a little light. Um, this, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, like they are going against the number one pass defense in the league with wide receivers that you've never heard of. They they can't run the ball. I, I just don't picture them at 0 and 6. I'm sure when when I when I talk to you next, you're gonna laugh at me because it's gonna be a blowout. Um, but I'm going to go with them just for the fun of it. <laughs> I don't really think that they're going to win, but I'd like to see it. I don't picture them at 0-6, so that's just why I'm going to take them. Ups uh, upset of the century alert is what you're saying. I'm going to go Denver in this game and because I am correct in doing that. Last one, Monday Night Football. We have Indy, my Indianapolis Colts, my beloved Colts. They'll be on the road at Tennessee Monday night. Nick. Jacoby Brissett under center. He, hear me out. He has been getting better every single game. He is a master of the deep ball. Him and T.Y. hook up all the time. They, they finally have their home run hitter. I love that expression when they combine baseball and the football. Marlon Mack at the running back position. I am picking Colts. Little minor upset. I'm going to go with the Titans. Um, Colts defense is trash. Uh, I definitely, I, I was a big, or I had high hopes for the Titans coming into the season. I'm a big Marcus Mariota fan. Um, to Mark Murray, I'm gonna take them to get the win. Uh, the defense, the Colts defense is young. 
They have they're, they're getting some playmakers in the secondary. Malik Hooker picks off every single throw that is in his direction. Vontae Davis is back. Uh, but for the Titans, Marcus Mariota is not a is not a sure thing to start this game. So just just know that if you take the Titans, which I, which I think you just did, that oh, yeah. you might have to have Matt Castle under center, which I don't think anybody wants that. Uh, no, I don't think it'll be enough to beat the Colts. Um, honestly, I think the Colts should just tank for the rest of the year, keep Andrew Luck on the side, maybe get him some help. That wraps up NFL picks. Nick, good job, buddy. I think uh, I think we're gonna this thing is gonna only take off. This we're gonna take off. Hopefully, just like uh, the comeback Texas is about to put on. Oh, is that? I wasn't even paying attention. What's is, is there? Twenty-three seventeen right now. Oh, come on, it, Oklahoma, play some defense. All right, well, that wraps it up for this inaugural episode of the Air Max Podcast. As always, I am Justin Ayers. I'm Nick Lomax. Signing off.